All right. The next spotlight is on fully understanding the hashing trick, and it will be presented by Lior Kemma. Thank you. Um, hi. So this is John Quark with Casper Flexen and Casper Green Lawson from Aarhus University. Uh, I will be talking about feature hashing, which is a key technique for dimensionality reduction in machine learning. So let me first um, motivate dimensionality reduction by a simple example. So suppose you select a video from your uh, favorite streaming video provider, and the provider wants to uh, recommend you another similar video. So how do we decide how, um, which movies are close together? Uh, so one common approach is to take the properties of the movies and turn them into uh, feature bit vectors and just compare them using, say, the Euclidean distance. Um, the problem with this is that storing these vectors and comparing them is, de depends linearly on the dimension, which might be very large. So this is exactly the problem that dimensionality reduction comes to solve. Suppose we have a desired approximation ratio and error probability. Uh, we want to find uh, a projection from the large feature dimension to a smaller target dimension, such that for every two vectors, the distance between them is preserved approximately uh, with high probability. And in this talk, I will focus on linear projections, which means I can focus on norm-preserving projections. Um, and uh, one fundamental result in this field is the johnston lindenstrasse lemma from the 1980s. Um, they exactly achieved exactly this with target dimension that does not depend on the original feature dimension, uh, but only on delta and epsilon. So as I'm standing here, you understand that the story is not over in the 1980s. And the thing is that the projection matrix is very, very sparse. It's very dense, sorry. And therefore, applying the projection uh, is very expensive. But what if we could make A sparser? So in 2009, Weinberger et al. Uh, uh, presented feature hashing. So the basic idea is to take the entries of X and map them into M buckets. Uh, and basically shuffle them with random signs, where the projected vector is attained by uh, summing the entries inside each bucket. So this is an example. Um, quick observation is that this operation is linear, and furthermore, it is as sparse as possible. Every entry of X is touched exactly once by the matrix. Uh, maybe a less easy to see observation is that if the target dimension is very large, and the mass of X is nicely distributed among its entries, uh, then we can get good guarantees. So why do, what do I mean by the mass of X is distributed nicely? So if you look at this example, um, this vector has two coordinates uh, which are heavy. And by heavy, I mean that with respect to the total mass of X. Okay, so the way to model this is the ratio between the L infinity norm and the L2 norm of X. Uh, in order to hash this uh, vector and maintain its norm, we need these two entries not to collide, not to, um, yeah, not to collide. And this happens with probability 1 over m, which means that in order, in order to get good performance, we need m to be very large. Formally, uh, suppose we, sorry, yeah, suppose we have a fixed budget and a fixed room for error, uh, we define by new the, ra the best ratio, the largest ratio, between the L infinity and the L2 norm, such that for vectors uh, attaining this ratio, we get good guarantees from feature hashing. So uh, evaluating this value new uh, was actually open, uh, an open problem since the original feature hashing paper in 2009. Uh, we resolved this problem by presenting tight bounds on new. Um, so uh, what we show is that if M is too small, then basically we can not give any guarantee, feature hashing does not give any guarantees. Uh, if M is large enough, then we can give guarantees to any sort of vector and yeah, embrace yourself. Um, so if M is between these values, then this is the correct asymptotic bound. And this is tight, so this is the right expression, however nice it is. Um, what perhaps is missing from the theory is uh, the constant hiding within this theta and we accompany our theory with experimental results that show that actually this constant is very close to one, meaning that this formula very well predicts the uh, performance of feature hashing in practice. 
So if you want to know more, you can approach me or Casper offline or come see us at the poster. Thank you.